If you spend even just five minutes of your time researching SEO, you've probably heard the adage, what you measure, you move. This means that you need to know your number and this is the first step in evaluating the performance of your SEO strategy. And believe me, there are literally hundreds of metrics to track. Google uses over 200 ranking factors in its algorithm, but it's best to stay focused on just a few to start. And it's really important that you understand which ones are actually critical for your business so that you can start tracking those regularly immediately. In our latest video, we showed you how to create and execute a content marketing strategy in just seven minutes. If you haven't seen it, make sure to check it out. I'll leave it in the description and even above. So now that you've created your content, you need to see how this content is going, what is working and what isn't. In this video, we'll show you 10 key metrics and how to interpret this data to see if your SEO strategy is working. Let's start with the first metric, organic traffic. When someone types a question, a word, or a string of words into a search engine, they will get a set of results consistent of ads and web pages. Organic traffic is the number of visitors your site gets from people clicking on links to your web pages when they come up from search engine results. Organic traffic is what you want because it's targeted. When a person is looking for something specific and you can provide them a solution, you can earn a subscriber or even better, a customer. Organic traffic is also a very effective indicator of the overall performance of your SEO strategy. If you see an improvement in organic search results, this means that your visibility connected through your keyword ranking is also going up, which is good. If you want a comprehensive view of how your site is doing against competitors, I can definitely suggest two tools, the main overview and traffic analytics. They both can give you a lot of insight into organic traffic, general traffic sources, and even how users behave on your site and on your competitor's site. What more? Start with the domain overview, where you get a high level look at traffic over time, including a breakdown of organic versus paid traffic, as well as what keywords are performing. You can look at up to five competing domains and compare your site's performance. And if you don't have any competitors in mind, don't worry, the tool will automatically suggest you some. From there, you can use traffic analytics to get a closer look at your traffic, including total visits and traffic sources. For example, direct, referral, paid, social, and search. We also provide a unique traffic journey that lets you see where your traffic is coming from and where it goes once it leaves your site. This is crazy insights into user behavior because you will be able to see where people go after they have visited your website. So if they go to competitors, you'll be able to see what competitors are doing better than you and implement it on your website. And if they're going to possible partnership collaborations, then you have a list of people you can reach out to to collaborate with. Next metric is keyword ranking. To see results with this metric, your website and content need to be optimized to rank on the top of search engine pages for specific keyword and long tail keywords. And by the way, if you don't know what long tail keywords are, how to find them and why you should be using them, I'll leave a link in the description to a video that we made on the topic, super helpful. A super easy way to track your Google rankings for keywords related to your business or your product is to just do a Google search. The results will show you where your website ranks for set competitive keywords. The ultimate goal is to get on the first page and as close to the top of Google as possible, considering that more than 25% of people click on the first Google search result. There's a way to even better understand your rankings and discover relevant new search terms that you could be using, which is doing a keyword gap analysis. With up to five competing URLs, we can help you identify which keywords you're ranking strongly for, keywords where you're weak, and untapped ones where your competitors are earning search engine rankings, but there's some potential for your domain. So you can understand here that we're not only telling you who your competitors are and which are the keywords that you have in common, we can even tell you what they are ranking for and you're not. And it's a full list of keywords, potential topics that you could be using on your content. Let's move on with the third key metric, SERP visibility. For every query, Google produces an outcome or a search engine results page, a SERP. These outcomes consist of organic results, ads, and SERP features. Example of SERP features include feature snippets, knowledge panels, image packs, and so on. Search engine visibility measures how many people see your website on the search results page, which could be affected by SERP features, 
but in general this metric can definitely give you an overall idea of your SEO progress. Easily check your website's visibility through the position tracking tool of the SEO toolkit. For instance, we offer a feature snippet feature to identify the opportunities to rank for feature snippets for specific keywords and get insights into what the current feature snippet looks like to help you outline your content. Okay, we're friends, I can tell you this. The position tracking tool, it's an amazing tool. Definitely top three of my favorites in the SEMrush overall toolkit. And it's what our own SEMrush SEO team starts their very day with every single day. Why? Very simple. In the position tracking tool, you can set your own set of keywords that you have decided, the ones that you're trying to target and to rank for. And every single day, every 24 hours, you'll be able to see how these keywords are ranking. Every single day, you have the improvements, you have the decrease, you have everything, everything that you want to know on mobile and on desktop in every location that you want to target, even in multi-location if you're targeting different countries. So I know if you're an agency or if you work with clients that you have that person that asks you every day. So are we there yet? Are we on the top pages of Google yet? Are we first? Are we in top 10? Now you'll be able to answer them. And finally, you'll be able to actually see every single day, what's the situation? How is your content doing? Which is extremely helpful when you're creating new content or when you're updating maybe some old content, you'll be able to see results every day, immediately. Moving on to our next metric, click-through rate. The click-through rate, or CTR, is the percentage of people that click on your website from the SERP. For example, your website CTR will be 10% if your website has appeared on the search engine results page 100 times in a week and 10 people clicked on it. You can use this metric as a barometer to understand whether your meta title and meta description are actually captivating users' attention so that they click on your website. Don't be discouraged if you see any low numbers. This doesn't mean that your website is bad. It just means that you maybe need to optimize your meta title or meta descriptions or URL and try to acquire some feature snippets that are relevant for your business or your product. Consider that the average click-through rate for the first position in Google is 28.5%, which means that if you boost your keyword ranking, you also have a chance of boosting your click-through rate. To review your click-through rate, you can open the Google Search Console. On the left-hand side, you'll see search traffic, then you can go to search analytics. You'll then see checkboxes titled clicks, CTR, and impressions. Click on the CTR box to view the report of the average click-through rate of your website and the top performing pages and keywords. All right, we're halfway there. Let's talk bounce rate. Your bounce rate represents the percentage of users that visit your website but leave without further interaction. And Google counts a visit as an interaction if the user clicks on more than one page. In a nutshell, it measures the quality of a visit. Different types of websites, of course, have different benchmarks for bounce rate. But just in general, keep in mind that a high bounce rate is no good for Google because it tells the algorithm that the users are not finding what they wanted, meaning that you're not answering the search intent. Using our traffic analytics tool, you can easily check your domain's bounce rate by the device, mobile or desktop, and if you've seen any recent improvement by looking at the past 6 months, 12 months, and all time. Let's keep going with website authority over time. Your website's authority predicts how well a domain will rank. Summersh's authority score is measured on a scale of 1 to 100, and a higher number means more traffic and better ranking, while a low number may cause decreased traffic and ranking. You can use domain authority scores to compare your website to your competitors and modify your SEO strategy to aim for a higher score than them. And don't worry, new websites will always start with a score of 1. Websites that take time to build authority, backlinks, and just generally gain constantly high organic traffic will mostly be in the 40 to 60 range. So don't be discouraged if you don't immediately see the results of your SEO efforts. Patience is the key component of any long-lasting and successful SEO strategy. So next metric, I know you've been waiting for this one, backlinks. Backlinks are one of Google's top ranking factors for websites. In a study, we found that 2.2 times more backlinks lead to URLs on the first position than to the URLs on the second, which is what we call a high volume spike. This should be a metric that you definitely monitor closely. 
you can easily track your backlinks number and referring domains with Backlink Analytics. This tool allows you to evaluate your site's link building progress, identify new backlinks, and discover when backlinks are deleted. Knowing the number of new backlinks to your site is valuable information to have as you review your link building efforts. If you have new sites linking to your content and a strong following profile, it means your current strategy is working. Next, we look at page speed. Your page speed is very important because it affects your other performance metrics. The study by Porton found that when you increase your site speed from 2 seconds to 1 second, your dollars per page view double. Faster page speed means better user experience. And better user experience means lower bounce rate and higher conversions. Google's new page speed industry benchmarks established a big correlation between fast websites and low bounce rates. They found that as page load times go up, the chance of someone leaving your site increases. A website that takes 10 seconds to load means an increase in bounce rate of 120%. Scary, right? Run your website through Google's PageSpeed Insights to find out if your site is fast. A score of 100% means it's fast. A score of 90 or above, but not 100, is considered good. If you got 50 to 90, that score needs improvement. And a score of 50% or below is considered poor. And the next metric we're going to talk about also relates to user experience. Time spent on page. This metric is all about how well your content meets user intent. If someone Googles something with specific keywords to find a product or a service and they land on your website and spend a lot of time there, it means they're satisfied. They found what they're looking for. You can track the average time visitors spend on your site on Google Analytics. On the left-hand side of your dashboard, open Behavior and then Overview. Click on the View Full Report at the bottom. It will bring up every page and post on your site with the average time spent on each one. In the column Average Time on Page, you'll see the average time visitors stayed on a particular page. From there, you can measure if the time spent on a page was too short by comparing it with your own average reading time. But also keep the goal of the page in mind. A time spent on a page of 60 seconds is great for a high converting lead magnet, but not so good for a long form post. So if your visitor's average is around your average reading time, it's safe to say that your content meets user intent. Okay, last one, conversion rate. Your conversion rate represents the overall impact of your SEO strategy on your sales, which is basically what we're all in this business for, isn't it? One way to track your conversion rate is to set up custom goals on Google Analytics. From there, you can input goals for visitors, such as read an article, watch a video, become an email subscriber, enroll in a course, and any other actions that lead a visitor to become a subscriber or a customer. With that, you can track the percentage of your site's visitor who do any of the actions and convert. You can also use the same information to customize your website design, content, or offers to get more visitors to become customers or subscribers. You can use the global average website conversion rate of 4.31% based on multiple marketplace conversion rates as a baseline. And if you need more help with your content strategy, you can definitely check out our content marketing toolkit. You'll get tailored examples for SEO-friendly content. You can audit your piece of content to identify what to improve. Find content ideas that will resonate with your audience and actionable tips on how to create high-quality content. So now that you have all the metrics and all the tools, you can start tracking the results of your SEO efforts. And keep in mind that every business and every website is different. So drop a comment and let me know how often do you track all these metrics or if you track any different metrics, which ones are you tracking and why? What insights do they give you? So I'll be waiting for you in the comments below. So as you've seen, there's a lot of work that goes into SEO ranking. But don't you even dare thinking that once you get to the top, you can stop working because that's when it becomes even harder. So if you want some SEO advice and tips on how to stay on top, I suggest you subscribe to this channel, hit the like button and activate the notification bell so that we can keep on giving you advice on how to conquer SEO. Also, I'm going to provide you with a link in the description to our SEO toolkit, just in case you haven't tried it, because it contains over 15 tools and reports that can help you and assist you in getting the best SEO results. So. I suggest you check the description. And once again, thanks for listening to me. I'll catch you guys in the next video. Have a good day. Bye.